Hi everyone. <laughs> it's Lily and Mark and we're just a couple of software engineers and in this video we are going to talk about the mistakes that we made while we were developing our mental health app Tappily. Now you see what I'm doing here like I'm holding on my arm like ah it's painful. That's what it's going to feel like if you don't listen to these mistakes and avoid them. Seriously. So we're going to talk about the mistakes first and we're also going to talk about how you can avoid them. So this information is like literally so valuable because it's like compiled of a couple of years of just sweat equity and hard work from me and Mark developing and learning mobile development. And so this would be perfect for anyone who's looking to start developing an app or website or really just make a business out of an app or website. So yeah. if you're interested in that, make sure and subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs, a thumbs up, and turn the notification bell on so that you never miss a video from us. All right, let's get this video started. successful shopping trip at my favorite grocery store ever now yes. we're trying to, now we're trying to find our car oh my gosh man I've just been so weak the past couple days and I'm just like ready to just feel better and stuff you know if you're new here a little background on Mark and I's software experience um, I'm an Android developer I was an Android he does iOS and Android and I can. I do mainly front end because I like front end. I don't like back end, but I can do back end. I know how to do that, and I know how to do like database design and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What do you do, Mark? I do uh, Android, iOS, uh, obviously excluding the design work that you do and the Android work that you do, and so the remaining amount of technical work I do is, as well as the uh, JavaScript on the back end. I use Node.js for uh, the back end coding. Okay. Also, I do UI UX design, which is not software-y. It's like the step before so uh, developing, but anyway. So that's our background. We've been doing mobile development for a few years now, and we love it. Yeah. And I bought two types of hummus, and we're trying it. And then also we're going to talk to you about our, our first mistake as developers. Okay, first off, jalapeno hummus is the best I've ever tasted. Second off, the worst mistake that we've made when we're developing Tappily is coding things that we're not going to use. Now I can tell you that we spent at least a month coding something that we weren't going to use. So that's 50 to 60 hours a week for at least one month of work that was completely, I wouldn't say wasted, but just literally not used at all, just scrapped. The only thing, the only good thing that comes out of that is that we learned a lot of new skills from doing that, especially Mark. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's never really wasted. I mean, you learn something, but ideally, you do want to learn to prepare before coding something so that you spend the time wisely. So how do you avoid doing stuff that will end up being scrapped, like wasting time coding things that are going to be scrapped? First off, you have to think about the complexity of what you're coding. So we spent literally a month coding this extremely complex thing that was really what we were trying to do was get around Apple's API. Apple's API is meant for specific purposes and so when you want to do something that's really outside of their the capability of the API, you have to start doing some hacky solutions that really overcomplicate everything you're doing. It not only makes it more complicated, but it also makes the testing complicated and it makes the stability of the code, you know, it's less stable and it's more likely to not work. And so after we spent a month developing this one feature, we realized that we were going down a rabbit hole of just after we'd solve one problem, we'd have a, another problem and then we'd solve that problem and there'd be another problem. So one way to avoid wasting time is if you feel yourself, you know, you solve one problem, but then you know, something else pops up and you keep having this list of problems for this one feature that you want in your app, then you should probably just scrap it, you know? Because trust me, it's gonna make your life so stressful and complicated, especially if you spend all that time coding something and then it just doesn't work half the time because it's so complicated. So that's our first mistake in how to avoid it. 
that's definitely a hard lesson that we had to learn and we're still learning how to really predict like using our time the most efficient way and coding things that will be wanted and used by Tablet users. So that's our first mistake. Yeah, and I think that um, basically you can get, uh, start, things can start getting complicated and you want to finish it. You know, you think, well, this is complicated, but it's going to be worth it. But then it can also be a trap, right? Like she said, because you just end up spending more time on this complicated task. Man. It's like a never ending task, basically. So if you find yourself getting into a task that's never ending, just find a way to either do something else or just scrap that feature from your app, especially if it's like version one of your app, definitely. Mistake number two, here we go. Okay, so mistake number two is pushing updates that are too far apart. So for example, let's say you wanna you know, redo a huge feature of your app or even redo like the UI design or something, something huge that's gonna take a month to three months plus to develop that. Well, I think it's kind of a mistake to wait three months to push an update on the App Store. That's what we did. We found ourselves, um, we've, we've had some experiences in the past where we would wait a long time and do a huge bulk update on the App Store. And I think it's easier and more efficient to break it up into smaller pushes to where you can get a push out once a week, once every two weeks, you know. That way you're always fixing bugs that pop up along the way. If you wait three months to do a push, then you're just gonna have three months worth of bugs that you- Could have avoided. You, that you could have avoided or been fixed a long time ago. So that's our second mistake. The way to avoid it is learning how to, you know, map out all of your tasks and break them into little clumps of work that you can get done in two weeks to a month and push it to the app store and then move on to your next clump of tasks. Yeah, I think it's really good to get rid of that, or not get rid of it, but uh, decrease the technical debt that you have in your project or system because, you know, it can not only add up some more over time, but you have the opportunity to, you know, decrease it. So, and that would make it more stable for your users. Very true. All right, that leads us to mistake number three out of five, by the way. Third mistake is kind of counterintuitive to most people who are entrepreneurs and the stigma around entrepreneurship where you need to hustle your A off and just work all the time. But I think a mistake that we made was working too much because I swear you will burn yourself out if you overwork yourself. You got to like be able to tune into yourself and figure out like, okay, I need a break. I feel like there's a line and the way to avoid overworking is when you do not want to work. I would advise you to not force yourself to work, honestly, and advise you to take a mental break every night and maybe even on the weekends because yes, you can work hard and work all the time for six months, a year, but at the end of that year, you will burn out. Like you'll get, you'll get to a point where you need work-life balance and you can't work all the time anymore. So that's my recommendation. I would say that you work probably five times more efficiently when you're working because you wanna work and not working because you're forcing yourself to work. Because when you force yourself to work 60, 70 hours a week, you will cut corners. Even if you're coding your own app, you know, that you're passionate about, but you're tired, you're still going to cut corners. And that's something that you wanna avoid when of developing an app because you're gonna have to go back and fix those things, those corners that you cut later on and that's gonna make it, you know, that's just gonna waste more time. So you might as well just take breaks and work as efficiently as you can. Yeah, and there's more, uh, I would say there's a difference between whenever you've had a long break and you're going back to work, you almost kind of want to work versus when you don't want to work because you've worked too long. You know what I'm saying? And so there is a point where you don't want to work anymore because you're just worked out. And there's also a point where when you've taken a long enough break, where you just naturally feel like, eh, I feel like I'm ready to go back into working. Yeah, like you get excited to go back to work. So that's how you avoid, avoid working too much by taking breaks and not forcing yourself, pushing yourself past these limits for a long period of time. All right, and now, mistake number four. So the fourth mistake is not prioritizing tasks. So Mark and I came up with this system that we write out all of our tasks in a Google Doc and then we'll assign them HPI, which is high priority item, 
MPI, which is medium priority item, and LPI, which is a low priority item. So when you're trying to get a push out, right, it's so easy to just think, oh my gosh, I need to do everything. I need to do this huge list of tasks. Especially if you're a perfectionist like me, like this is literally my downside, is that I will wanna do every single thing, all these little detailed tasks that just take up so much time. The key to this, is, and this is something that I'm learning still, but we have been implementing it and it works really well, especially when we're trying to get something out on a specific deadline, is only do the HPIs, and even then, make sure that it's just the most necessary bare minimum tasks that need to get done. When I say bare minimum, that sounds bad, but in reality, if usually developers, especially if, you, if your business is wrapped around whatever you're developing, you're going to be a perfectionist and think things are necessary when they're not actually necessary. Trust me, we've done it too many times, wasted too much time doing this. So the thing that you need to do is only do the bare minimum because really it's not gonna be the bare minimum. It, it'll feel like the bare minimum to you, but to your user, they probably won't notice all these little details that you notice. So how to avoid wasting more time is prioritizing your task and only doing the high priority items and coming back to the other lower or medium priority items later when you have more time. Yeah, and the other thing is that with high priority items, if you're gonna organize a list of them, whenever it's time to do something big, like get a push out, at least you'll have a stopping point after the high priority items and you, you know, won't move forward to the medium low ones. You can stop there, get your changes out. That's true, that's another thing. When you're trying to get a push out, it's easy to just keep adding tasks to the list before the push. But if you have a strict list of high priority items, then you have like, once you check them off and you test them, then you can push the update. Another thing is that the less tasks that you do, the less stuff that you have to test right before you push an update, which testing is literally probably my least favorite part of mobile development because it's just tedious and it always takes 10 times longer than you would expect. So that is a very important mistake to avoid. Please, please learn from our mistakes. You made it this long. I've saved the best mistake for last. And it is that we wish we would have put Tapley into beta, beta faster. faster. <laughs> oh my God, we're just so coupley right now. I'm kidding. So yeah, we waited to put uh, Tapley into beta on iOS until the app was literally perfect. Literally, we have not had a crash since we released iOS in beta until now. Now, there's still been no crashes on iOS. And if you think about it, it's like, why did I wait? Why did we wait so long to get Tapley into beta when we could have been getting feedback earlier on, which would have probably saved us, you know, time in the future for having to like redesign some things that we haven't done yet. But I'm saying that honestly, you should be getting your website and app into beta after you code the first feature, you know, start looking for beta testers because one, people like to be early adopters and two, the more feedback you get, the more time that you're actually going to save in development because a lot of times people think that there's features that are gonna be used that people don't use. I like to think of, uh, what is it? 20% of the input equals 80% of the output. So if you think about that, really only 20% of your app is gonna give you 80% of the usage if you follow by that. That's like an economics rule or something. But still, it's actually kind of true looking at Tapley's analytics. There are a few features that people use heavily, you know, versus the other features that aren't used as much. So just think about that. Get your app or website in beta as soon as possible. Get on social media, start contacting beta, uh, to get beta testers as soon as possible. Yeah, and even though we haven't had any crashes on iOS, I think the point of this one is to say that you don't have to be perfect. You can have a crash, especially during beta testing, and it's not going to really have a big impact. And you're just going to have more time to test it at that point if you get it earlier. That's true. Also, people realize that a beta is like gonna be buggy. Like people know that, you know? So your beta testers are already gonna expect your app not to be perfect at all. So why not put your app out there if people are already expecting it not to be perfect? You know, you might as well get that feedback. Also another thing is don't try and be too perfect 
because that's just gonna hold you back from releasing something faster. You need to release it uh, as quick as you can, honestly. I mean, I don't know, that's just like, I would say that that's a hard lesson that we learned with uh, developing Chapley is not releasing it earlier because we could have released it six months before we actually released it into beta, but we didn't. So that's six months worth of users and beta testers that we could have had. But lesson learned, and that's why I get to share this, all this wonderful, valuable information with you guys so that you don't make the same mistakes. Yeah, it just remember that you can always push an update. So if there are mistakes made, it's not the last uh, code that will be used. Even popular apps are still pushing updates. So it's a continuous process and you can always push another update. Very true. Mark and I are enjoying a little snack before before dinner but that's going to conclude this video honestly i feel like this is one of my most valuable videos because we literally just told you all these mistakes that we had to learn the hard way and we really hope that you can avoid these things so please take this advice to heart and really think about implementing it into your business your website or app that being said if you haven't already please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel and turn that notification bell on so that you never miss a video from me and my boy mark all right can't wait to see you next time see you later bye bye from just a couple of software engineers